so our, our next speaker, Don Edwards, is uh, from Washington, D.C. Uh, and Don is on this panel for, for a couple of reasons. Uh, Don, you know, if you want to know a little bit about Don, Don Don's firm, uh, the name of his firm tells you a lot about where Don stands on things. It's, it's called Justice and Sustainability Associates. And not only has Don been a, a leader in just about every, every significant public process that has occurred in D.C., but D.C. has an interesting place in our discussions here as the home of uh, our federal government, just, uh, our federal government in D.C., the community is a powerful example of the whole equity conversation we've been having this week uh, in, in just stark, stark ways uh, and for decades, you know, the, the schizophrenic nature of being home to the federal government and also being a, a local, real community um, provides a lot of complexity, but you, you also have the, the scenes of, you know, struggling inner city neighborhoods that are in you know, sight of some of the most powerful uh, uh, institutions in the world, uh, and you have the change that's occurring in you know, some of what are now Tony neighborhoods like uh, Georgetown, which are, are known as, as uh, places to, to visit and enjoy yourself, uh, former slave quarters uh, serving as the hot market item uh, real estate-wise for for young urban professionals and, and things like that. So it's a really interesting context in terms of city building uh, and, and dialogue to bring to this. And Don has, has been intricately involved in not just uh, so many uh, of the public processes, but in building the city's capacity to engage in public work more effectively through neighborhood college programs, through a variety of initiatives, uh, and, and serving as an important voice about public process through a succession of very different leaders, uh, very different mayors that had different perspectives on uh, how the public sector should interact with the community. So with that, I'll introduce Don Edwards. So <clears throat> good morning, everyone. I want to quickly talk about um, a framework um, to consider as we think about remaking cities. I, I want to talk about the social um, lens through which we have to perhaps uh, think about that, that commitment. So I, I'm going to talk about transforming the District of Columbia's civic culture. Um, and I think that the opportunity that we have is to imagine how do we begin to take legacy cities and recreate cities that will be more just and sustainable. Um, I guess it would be fair to say that most people know that Washington, D.C. is a southern city. And like many southern cities and many cities in the country, it was a city divided. It had lots of inequities built in, inequities in educational attainment, inequities in income, inequities uh, of all kinds, access to jobs, transportation, residential segregation. The, the important point here is that um, there came a point in the end of uh, the 90s with the election of Mayor Anthony Williams that a recognition was given to the need to recreate the civic fabric of Washington. And it was started with the idea of creating an inclusive city. Now, this idea of an inclusive city is very interesting because, as Joel has intimated and you all know, Washington, D.C. is many cities. It's the federal city. It's D.C., uh, the city of neighborhoods. It's the core or the, 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 the donut hole at that time in a metropolitan region. It's an international city, the city of embassies. And so the idea of creating an inclusive city, I think, was and is relevant as we talk about remaking cities in the 21st century. And I would posit that it's the issue of inclusivity versus exclusivity that is going to determine the credibility of how we get people to engage. Um, and by that I mean this. Um, 
We are now in a position, as we have done in Washington uh, on five or six occasions now, to put two to 5,000 people in a room and talk about how you create one city. This is something we did in February of uh, 2012. We not only had people in the room, but we had 200 to 300 people participating who were participating online and using different kinds of technology and software. These innovations have actually made it very difficult now to say that it's not possible to know what your citizens want. And it, it raises the question when we talk about designing democracy then, of how committed are we to actually having democracy? Uh, and I think it's mostly now a matter of will. It's not only public policy, but as we've seen um, in the last couple of weeks, it's a question of political consensus. And one of the things that has become remarkable about Washington in in this particular administration, the drive to create one city has encompassed creating one city geographically. Uh, as you know, Washington is the city that's in, in the north and the west, but then there's also the city that's across the Anacostia River, the city we call east of the river. Um, so there's a geographic separation. I've already talked about the other separations that have existed historically. And then of course, there is this enormous separation between the federal city and the city or neighborhoods. This idea of creating one city represents a recognition that we have arrived at a point in Washington where there really is no barrier uh, from the standpoint of inclusivity to be clear about the pathway, the roadmap to achieving inclusivity. The real question, however, is do you get people to put their faith and full credit in that vision? So I want to talk a little bit about some of the ways in which you get people to move from being observers in an audience to actually engaging. And I'll just touch briefly on a couple of these points. I think you want to recognize that for very long what we've been doing in our process design is treating people and leaving people as audiences rather than making them into constituents. Constituents own the outcome, they own and leave their, uh, their impact on the final result. And I would posit that where we are looking now as we talk about remaking cities is are we going to have cities in which we actually share the ownership share the governance of the processes that we make our cities. Um, in my own mind, we have still got to prove, and I will put it this way, if, if we were in a fishbowl here, and there were people in Pittsburgh looking at what we've been talking about, would they find the conversation credible? Would they find themselves wanting to ante up and engage? And to do that, I think they would have to be able to feel that they were actually going to see their fingerprints, they were going to have influenced the final product in a way that has not always historically happened for everyone. Now, in the District of Columbia, one of the things that we've learned is you've got to really have some principles for engagement and if you're going to change the civic culture, you've got to apply these principles over and over again. And what I recommend to you here is whether it's these principles, you want to create a contract, you want to create uh, a commitment that you're going to behave in the same way, dependably, consistently, predictably, reliably, so as to build trust and credibility with all of your constituents. And I want to I want to make sure that we recognize and I want to offer as a challenge that as we talk about uh, remaking cities uh, I was thought I thought it was very provocative in a way that uh, David Lewis and even Mickey Jacobs 
talked about the framing and launching that the civil rights movement, and we've been talking about that uh, even today. Um, if we're going to talk about remaking cities, I think we have to decide how do we want these cities to operate? Why are they, why are we remaking them? And I want to leave this quote with you from Martin Luther King because I think it still remains to be seen in this country and it remains to be seen across North America and probably across the world. What is our commitment? What is the purpose of our cities? My reading is that there are people today who see cities as places that are creating a world that they are opposed to. They don't want the kind of progressive community building that cities represent to go any further. I think we have to decide whether we're going to recommit and restate that we are committing uh, and creating beloved communities. Now, what does this mean? And I will leave this with you because I hope we'll have some time to engage with you. I have three things. One, in 25 years, will there be another one of these conferences or congresses, and what will we talk about? I wonder, too, what the composition will be. Um, who will be in the room? Who will have access, whether they're not here physically? And how will we see the trend from the conference that took place 25 years ago through this one to the next one? And then I also imagine who will be the champion? Now, the, the prince has, has been a champion for the last 25 years. I don't think he and possibly even me and many of us will be here in the next 25 years. So I would like to propose that maybe in the next 25 years, the conference champion will be that young woman from Kabul, Afghanistan, who a lot of people thought should have gotten the Nobel Prize. I'd like to have the idea that a city like Kabul could become some place where she could walk around in the open and be respected and be recognized as an equal member of the human race, which is not currently what can happen there. I, I would like to think that we would also um, have people here who represent that we've moved beyond North America and Europe, and we're now looking at uh, Kayalitsa uh, outside of Cape Town, or Kibera outside of, uh, of uh, um, the city in Kenya or we would have people from, from some other parts of Asia and, and, and uh, reflect how we recognize that we've now got a large globalization, urbanization process that is driving people to be together. But to be together, we've got to figure out a way that they all actually are allowed to take ownership of the places they live. So I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to leave you with this beloved community, and I hope that when we decide what we're going to recommend going forward, we will keep these kinds of ideas in mind. Thank you.